Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Jason Lehman. I'm the marketing team lead here at Fishbowl Solutions. And I'll be the host for today's webinar titled, How Cox Enterprises Drove Employee Efficiencies and Engagement with the Digital Workplace, Leveraging Oracle Web Center Portal. Here's our agenda and topics for today's webinar. We'll start off by getting to know a little bit more about our speakers, and we're privileged to have with us Dave Longacre, who was the program manager for Cox's Digital Workplace Project. I'll then provide some foundational and background information on why we chose this topic and invited Cox Enterprises to present. And the majority of the presentation will be a case study on Cox Enterprises' successful implementation of a digital workplace. This will include why they started their digital transformation initiative, the steps that they took to launch their digital workplace, as well as some of the resulting benefits and next steps. We'll then hear how Cox and Fishbowl partnered on the technology components to build the digital workplace, featuring a portal that includes collaboration, enterprise search, and content integration with inline contribution capabilities. The last part of our webinar will include some high-level information and comparison for Oracle's technology options to deploy a digital workplace, either on-premise or in the cloud. So with that, I'd like to give each one of our speakers, starting with Dave, the opportunity to introduce themselves. So Dave, you're first. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dave Longacre. I'm a senior manager at Cox Enterprises. Been here uh, 11 years. As Jason said, I was the program manager on our digital workplace launch, and I'm also responsible for portal, collaboration, and mobile solutions. Thanks, Dave. Jerry? Good afternoon. This is Jerry Aber. I'm uh, currently director of solutions here at uh, Fishbowl Solutions, and I, my primary role is driving a solution approach to our digital workplace offering. And I spent the last 18 years in the web portal and content space, and I work closely with Cox on the digital workplace rollout. Great, thanks guys. So, some goals of today's webinar. We really wanted to help everyone understand right up front what a digital workplace is. We're gonna define it based on some industry studies and analysis that's been done, as well as Fishbowl's experience delivering multiple digital workplaces over the last few years. We'll also cover some of the business drivers for digital workplace. Hopefully these will help you recognize and uncover areas in your organization that you and maybe your department are looking to transform. And from there, what are some of the key components that make up a digital workplace that could lead to this transformation? This could be collaboration, enterprise search, mobile access, etc. Like I mentioned, the majority of today's presentation will really be Dave at Cox detailing the digital workplace success story they had there. We thought Cox's use case and vision for the digital workplace provided a great example for other companies to model after. And lastly, we understand that having a digital workplace vision is not enough. It can't be realized without technology, as well as those specific tools and components to transform how people work. And that is really the key to launching and having the employees adopt a digital workplace. It's really recognizing that there may be better ways to engage employees, connect with employees, and drive process efficiencies within an organization, really changing the way people work and how they get work done. So what is an employee digital workplace? So a big part of the successful digital workplace implementation is, is taking that initial step back and defining what it is. We've seen with the projects we've been, we've been on and delivered the last three years that it really starts with this digital transformation initiative. As I mentioned on the previous slide, someone within your organization, leadership, key stakeholders, employees themselves, they've recognized efficiency and engagement gaps in the organization and they wanna improve them. It's also important to address the fact that a digital workplace is more than just a portal. Now the portal is really an important component as it's used to bring together and surface up the content for an employee digital workplace, but a, a portal by itself cannot fulfill all the requirements and capabilities of an employee digital workplace. 
Another key aspect of a digital workplace set is that all the new ways for employees to access information, collaborate, and respond to administrative and job-related tasks. All those processes have to be backed by a strong governance model. Controls to drive access, content updates, and new design changes. Really understanding the who, what, when, and why as it applies to the content and capabilities driven by the portal. And lastly, a digital workplace leads to, it should lead to measurable outcomes. So Dave from Cox is going to share with you a little bit later on some of the metrics that they're tracking and some of the benefits. These metrics will help them adjust some of the capabilities of the digital workplace going forward, but they also map back and yours should map back to the initiative and goals that you've set out within your organization to transform engagement and business processes. And that could be increased retention and or de increased retention of employees or de decreased attrition. It could be less calls to your help desk, or it could be improving the cycle time of benefit processing during open enrollment. Whatever the key drivers are for the digital workplace, these should be able to be measured and acted upon after your launch. So I wanted to share a few stats. I mentioned we've been keeping a pretty good pulse on the industry and the analysis that's being done within the workplace. And our friends at Deloitte put together a white paper called Digital Workplace Think, Share, Do. So just sharing a few stats from that white paper. In that study, they provided some statistics from a survey that they did. And some of the things they found out in that study inc included the ability to attract top talent. So a digital workplace, should provide all the capabilities to employees to work from home and still be productive. To be able to leverage a central system to really direct and guide them to tasks, colleagues, and relevant content. And this includes the ability to access such, inf such information on the go, for example, on a mobile device. The next statistic here is that a key driver was collaboration in the workplace. And that collaboration can lead to more productivity. So a digital workplace should feature collaboration capabilities that encourage employees to share information and connect with others, with the thought that that collaboration will spark new ideas and innovation. And to piggyback off that stat, the study also found that true social capabilities in the workplace leads to more employee satisfaction. This could be as simple as having the ability to provide forums for water cooler conversations, hobby groups, or even sharing the latest grumpy cat video and rating it. This could also be the ability to quickly create and launch polling. Last one here is employee retention. So where there's more and better employee engagement in the workplace, there's an increase in employee retention. And fundamentally, I think that really just comes down to that employees are people and people are social. If people can connect and socialize with others in the workplace, if they can collaborate, they'll be happier. And happy employees are more productive employees and increased production should lead to more profit. So before I turn it over to Dave, the last thing I wanted to share is the key components that make up the digital workplace. Now there may be others, but in our digital workplace projects, each one of these that I'm going to share with you have been critical to the success and launch of a digital workplace. The first one is content management. What we've seen is that digital workplace projects help provide the impetus to, con to really consolidate content in an organization. But in general, a strong content management system will centralize those, those key assets for the digital workplace and the portal where they're being surfaced to and provide ways to contribute content directly to the portal itself. We've also talked a little bit about collaboration and social capabilities, so no surprise that collaboration is another critical component. Such collaboration gives employees the ability, the ability and really empowers them to share information and want to learn from others as well as find others in the organization that can help them get their jobs done. The ability to quickly find relevant information as well as people is all driven by an enterprise search, a strong enterprise search tool or component within the digital workplace. Users should have the ability to search for content in context of the portal and have those results returned within those pages. And the other key part is really that portal piece. The portal really is that platform that integrates all these capabilities together. It'll provide a modern user experience that's mobile enabled, 
and the technology to integrate all the systems easily, as well as surface up the content from multiple, source, multiple sources and personalize the content to the user. Key aspect and driver for the digital workplace is also to provide that single pane of glass to information for employees. So digital workplace should really incorporate some aspect of self-service within the portal. It should enable employees to complete all their tasks within that single view without having to switch between applications. And that is what makes a portal sticky, not having to switch between multiple tasks, multiple applications to get your work done. And lastly, there needs to be security protocols in place to control access and user capabilities on the portal. Ability to leverage single sign-on, and once logged in, user credentials are passed through, ensuring personalized relevant experiences for each user, but also controlling who can do what on the portal, including making edits to content or page layouts. So really, all these components together make up the employee digital workplace. Again, there may be others, and some organizations may put more focus on one component over another, but all of these have really been critical to successful digital workplace projects, including the one Dave is going to tell you about right now at Cox Enterprises. Dave. <clears throat> all right, thanks. So uh, Cox Enterprises is a privately held company. Um, so actually, our CEO, Alex Taylor, is the fourth generation uh, leadership from the Cox family. It's great working for a family company, particularly when they got revenues of 18 billion and 50,000 plus employees. Believe it or not, they still find a way to make it feel somewhat like a, a, a company business. And we have an interesting mix of companies. Uh, we started uh, in 1896 in the newspaper business, the Dayton Daily News, expanded into other newspapers, including the AJC, added radio TV stations, got into cable communication with Cox Communications. And as, as part of that, with our classified listings, we got into publishing uh, used car prices that led us into the auto auction business with Mannheim Auto Auction. And once we got into the auto business, we then started the uh, Auto Trader brand and, and added to our auto uh, brands with Kelly Blue Book and several other uh, Next Gear and several other properties in the automotive realm. Next slide, please. So, this uh, our digital workplace has been a three year journey and um, Tagline or our key objective at the top was create a connected consumer like digital experience um, to, to promote collaboration, spark innovation, help employees get their jobs done any place, any time, on any device. And, you know, that, that's really critical for us. And that's not just a project tagline, it goes right to the vision that Alex Taylor has for our company. If you jump down to the last bullet, the business driver, um, being a private company, we have the ability to try to put forward a vision for 20 years out. And so Alex Taylor uh, defined growth objectives for our company for the next 20 years in his, in his future focus 2035. And we really believe that the digital workplace program is going to be a key support and success factor for that future focus. We expect that the collaboration that we bring to the table will uh, increase innovation and we're, we're looking for synergies within our employees. So as, as they connect through collaboration and, and we make it more efficient for them to connect to the tools and get their jobs done, we think we're providing money right to the bottom line to meet these goals. So, you know, stepping back a second, the objectives there was we wanted to uh, engage our employees with easy access to content, resources, and tools. We needed a, a really good user, design, user experience design, uh, basically, to really engage our employees and um, we wanted to enhance our employee collaboration. So this program was a joint initiative between uh, corporate communications, which was the primary sponsor, but also human resources and IT. Next slide, thank you. So the digital workplace program really had three technical components. It was uh, standing up collaboration, we used Jive, had a mobile component, and it also had our portal. And the vision for our portal was um, to create a new company portal that would be a destination for our employees to go for company-wide information, shared tools, and resources. We, we really feel like, uh, I mean, our, our old portal was 10 plus years old and it showed its age. So we're obviously, like everyone else, trying to attract a, a new uh, workforce, new population workforce, younger, younger demographic. We call them mobile millennials and we need to meet their expectations with consumer-grade solutions. 
And so we needed our, our company portal to be content rich news hub that provide a good location for our employees to get their HR benefits information and other employee services. And we also wanted it to position us to engage our employees as ambassadors and customers because we want them armed with knowledge about our businesses to go out there and represent Cox effectively in the marketplace. And as I said, we need to meet the expectations of mobile millennials. From a technology standpoint, um, this starts with content. And we, we wanted a solution that would provide us with a rich content solution that was intelligent, could target content, make it available to employees, personalize our solution. And so the Web Center platform did that for us. So the portal is the manifestation of the um, content repository. And so the Oracle Web Center portal allowed us to um, surface content in a targeted fashion based on who you are. Uh, so you log into the portal, your profile defines that you're from Division A, you're in Department B, and you're in Location C, and so we target content based on that. That was critical for us. So also collaboration, you know, as I said, we use Jive and we actually surface the Jive collaboration stream into our portal, but we also are using collaboration techniques within the portal. All our content has the ability for our employees to indicate, you know, to comment on the content and also indicate if they like or dislike the comment content as well. And, and last was the search. We need to be able to get people to find what they were looking for. And we implemented Google search appliance, familiar search interface, and that was really helpful for folks. And then you see around the circle all the other elements that we had to integrate to. On the bottom right, third-party applications. Uh, we, we link out via SSO to lots of third parties. Vanguard for 401k, Aetna for benefits. Just, uh, I can think of lots of different ones. Oracle, Taleo for uh, talent management. And then also internally on the left-hand side, our ERP systems, PeopleSoft and eBusiness Suite and uh, Business Intelligence, uh, Oracle Fusion applications. So when it came to digital workplace program, we wanted to make sure that we had a really engaging solution that worked on mobile phones, that worked on tablets, and that worked on, on desktops. And we really feel like we, we did a good job accomplishing that with the help of Fishbowl. So here's a, here's a view of our old portal. And uh, you can tell, as I said, it's very dated. Links on the bottom left, you know, just a link farm kind of thing very little uh, photography, uh, and the navigation was really poor, no search, it was not mobile enabled, um, just, just not a lot there. You know, if you knew what you were looking for, you could get there, but otherwise, not a lot to draw you there. But our new portal, we have tried to make it more engaging, did uh, use a lot more photography. Um, our corporate communications content people are writing articles specifically for our portal, so these news highlights, some of these are newly are, uh, authored, content. Um, you see that there's a spotlight on the middle there. We highlight employees and functions each week. And, you know, there's a quick view, but on the bottom, there was a poll that we update each week. And also on the bottom, there's a, a feed from our Jive system, our activity stream, so you can see types of collaboration activities that are underway. So we feel like, our employees feel like this was a good upgrade. Next slide. So, you know, we needed a good platform to accomplish this vision, and we felt like uh, Oracle was a good platform. Um, the integration with Web Center content was going to allow us to satisfy our targeting and personalization goals for having an engaging user interface. Um, and also, we needed the flexibility to bring Jive into the picture. We called it Jive on the side. So Jive was a separate instance of collaboration, but we integrated the activity feed directly into the portal homepage so you could see what's new in your activity feed and click directly and, and boom, right into Jive. And we also integrated uh, activity from other areas as well. We have notifications that flow in from PeopleSoft and also from Oracle EBS via SOA and Bepl implementations. So from a cloud perspective, uh, cloud wasn't really an option for us when we started this in 2015. I don't think at that time 
Oracle, with, well, I know that they didn't have a cloud offering in the portal space, but they were just just turning their attention to cloud <clears throat> at that time. So it really wasn't really an option for us. But we did implement Portal 12C, which does gives us some some uh, conversion opportunities in the future. Uh, but you know, we did do an on-premise thing partly because we have scalability and performance drivers. We've got to be able to support at least 1,500 concurrent users, <clears throat> and so. Um, there were no cloud options when we started, but in the future, we could have lift and shift capabilities. So from a design standpoint, <clears throat> you know, this was a three-year journey for us, and we, we started it with uh, working with business consulting partners, a big five consulting concern, who helped get executive alignment, goals, strategic objectives, that sort of thing, division alignment. And then we worked with a third party uh, in a, uh, a third-party design firm to help us start to drill down on what the vision needed to look like. <clears throat> we had Fishbowl involved in that process, and then we went into the more detailed design and the build process. Let's go. Let's go to the next slide and look at this in a little more detail. So, from a discover standpoint, um, we we did a, a lot of key stakeholder interviews. We talked to line people. We talked to drivers at the Mannheim Auto Auctions, we talked to uh, the cable installers, we talked to middle managers, we talked to executives, and uh, we wanted to understand what were they looking for, what was their desired future state. We also did a very extensive content audit and inventory, which was very helpful. We found a lot of gaps and a lot of old, stale content, and that really helped inform what the new design needed to look like. And we also made sure that we were clear on what our content integration models were before we got started. So go forward, please. The next <clears throat> technique we used was personas. And you guys may have seen these before, but the idea here is um, to create a composite of what our, some of our users look like. And take Adam, for example. You know, this is, a, this is one of the employees that uh, needs information from, from his division. And by building personas, we can define what does this kind of person need. And it, it's helpful because people can relate to these. and can understand, oh, I'm like Adam, I need to see, these are the kinds of things I need to see. Let's go to the next slide, please. If we look at this in more detail, we can see um, the persona, Adam's persona, right? As you, you see in the upper left, the kinds of function he's interested in looking for and accessing, uh, the preconditions that describe what needs to be in place for him to be able to access it, the post conditions, what is the result of his accessing it. And then also you can see specific use cases, the flow of, of how this is going to work, which map to a reference uh, architecture. So this is very helpful for us to make sure that we were covering the key personas in our organization and our design was going to be complete. So in terms of uh, building the design, our third party design firm started with site maps. They, they went then started to go to wireframes on each key section of the portal. They did high fidelity visualization and design comps and the style guide as well to help when we started to build, make sure everything was in alignment. And during this process, we brought Fishbowl, and in fact, it was Jerry Aber who sat in on these design reviews to ensure that what the um, design firm was coming up with wasn't too outlandish in terms of what the Oracle portal could, could support. So Jerry was really good at saying, great, no problem, we can do that, or hey, I see what you're trying to go for here, but if you change it just slightly, we can still um, satisfy the UX experience you're looking for and, and map to basic capability within the product set. So that was a very good lesson. That was a good thing, I think. I'm glad that we did that. So that was very helpful. Next slide, please. I want to show you guys some of the content that we um, brought forward. The bottom right, the biggest chunk, employee services. These are tools, people finder, and policies. You know, the bread and butter, X's and O's of what a portal needs to do. Uh, upper right, HR benefits, that's our next biggest content area. Um, where do you go to view your paycheck, set your tax specifications, do your elections? And in the upper left, news and info, this is an area that we really beefed up in the new portal, and uh, we're pretty pleased with how that worked out. Culture and history, we, we beefed up the, the background of our uh, content that we had to describe our history and help people understand our culture. And then communities, this is the collaboration. So we wanted to make sure that we represented the collaboration space within our portal. Next slide, please. 
One thing that um, Jason called out is portal governance, and this is this is really important. And this is one thing we learned. In fact, we had a change uh, about two thirds of the way through our project. So the person who was, you know, basically giving the vision of the portal and how it should look and how it should feel and everything, left the company, and we had somebody new come in, and they had a slightly different portal vision. And so we had to align that and. Um, so since then, he's taken ownership of it. And so when people uh, come in and new departments or departments says, hey, I want to add a page or I need to add some content, it's really important that the context or the guiding principles or the structure of the portal that you would envision from a design and, and voice perspective flavor stays true when you add these new elements. And so don't underestimate this. This was actually hard for us to work through, but we're glad we put focus on it. Also, we, in both the design process and working with Fishbowl to build our product, our, our portal, we did agile um, approach, which is unusual for us because we're much more of a waterfall shop. We've done some agile, but not a lot. And in the design uh, process, um, we'd go through sprints, and one lesson learned for us was we should have been more rigorous. Our, our business people should have been more rigorous in of making decisions and reviewing the results and making sure that that was exactly what they wanted. Uh, we let them be a little too wishy-washy and so we ended up having to redo a lot of designs and a lot of decisions. Some change controls cost us some additional money and uh, so that would be a lesson learned for us and something you guys might think about is make sure that you're putting a, t a ton of rigor into the design reviews and, and trying to cover everything really thoroughly uh, at that point, don't let it go past the design review of that sprint. And when we started building with Fishbowl, kind of the same thing. They would build a section, and, and we didn't bring enough rigor to the table to say, let's thoroughly evaluate this and make sure it's exactly what we wanted. And our QA team wasn't really geared towards doing um, agile approach. And so after we built everything, we ended up doing a QA waterfall kind of phase, if you will. and um, but it worked out well because we ended up with a good, um, really good quality, had very few issues. But I would definitely say the thing to focus on is making sure that you put a lot of rigor into the sprint reviews to catch issues right there and get them fixed right away and don't let them linger. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Jerry to talk about the framework of the portal. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Dave. So let's spend a little bit of time talking about the uh, digital workplace framework approach we took, and we do this a lot with when we're dealing with portals. Um, if you look out there, large portals on average take about 15 to 18 months to deliver, and they're somewhere complex, some aren't very complex, and they still take that long. And we've done some projects, internet type portal implementations in less than 60 days. We've been through the grind, if you will, with respect to the number of internets, number of portals, and extranets we've put together. And there's a lot of patterns that are inside of those capabilities. So you heard Dave mention that they selected Oracle as a platform for delivering their digital workplace. It's a very good, strong infrastructure platform to deliver your digital workplace on and extend those framework concepts into your site design. Your site design will dictate a lot of that. And when we're dealing with the framework, we're taking the framework concepts that we start with and making the changes based on your site design there. That's driving it. You're gonna hear me when you work with us and talk about how we deliver these projects, a lot about reuse frameworks and total cost of ownership so that you understand where those impacts are going to be. So what drives that? Um, Cox uh, used our Portal Solution Accelerator framework and it's basically a combination of software and services for a rapid portal setup and deployment driven by the user experience and that content integration. Your site design will dictate patterns that will take you from the out of the box starting point with the framework, but that's what's the good part about it is that framework gets extended and gets rolled back into your patterns. It basically consists of Web Center portal and content bundles. So there's a collection of libraries and code and some pages and assets and content profiles and rules and some base security and templates we use over the course of the history of building our portals. Reusable components like news and carousels, primary and secondary, patterns for getting at related content, topics and articles. So you see the benefits right away, which apply easily to that agile approach for development delivery that Dave was talking about. 
So we can stand up something rather quick, show it to an end user, get feedback, work on the next thing very quickly. The content integration is performed via the um, Fishbowl single application task flows. We have a model, we have a single component that we put on the portal that we do single page application templates for, and that's where we do the integration points with the content and any back office integrations you, you have in your site design. Functionally, there's some benefits to for this for any portal. With, we have time to market benefits for doing it this way. We've seen exceedingly quick times to getting stuff into a customer's hands to review an agile model or even prototype or build proof of concepts. The Solution Accelerator has speed and performance built into it based on the, the way we're handling caching and the way we're doing the um, integration with the content in the back office systems. And we're using web developer friendly technology elements so that you can extend and use this when Fishbowl is done and move on with additional features in your portal. So when you look at the, the portal feature mapping, when you start out of the box, you can stand up a portal pretty quick outside of the, uh, the box with what Oracle gives you with some templates and some pages and some components. But you quickly, as soon as you start to apply some of your site design concepts, if you have thought about how you might apply that, then you need to extend that, you need to build on top of that. We add the portal and content bundles into a component uh, level installation and allow you to configure some of those. And then as your site design gets built out and you dig deeper into how those click events work, not just features and function sets, some minimum or major type of customizations or build outs have to be done. And they happen usually in the task flow, um, reskinning of task flows, or even application or data integration type elements. And we're hoping that you're thinking about responsive design, and we take that as a baseline consideration when we build these portal sites. So, let's talk content integration. A big feature um, that Jason pointed out in a digital workplace is content. Out of the box, there are content integration with the portal. It's native to what you do. What is different is your site design might dictate how that pattern works, and it might not be exactly how you want that experience to work. So you can opt to change and use some of the features out of the box, or we introduced the, some of the features in the Portal System Accelerator to make that even easier to use. Some of our customers in the past have used quite a bit of kind of a hybrid approach where they will contribute into the content server using the content server UI, and then edit in line in context of the portal with the web editor for items in the site that have been designated for web contribution. We have since, in the last um, portion of this year, created our own inline contribution panel, which allows for complete contribution, net new ads, metadata management, web content, drag and drop features, directly in the portal side of things without having to go to the content server at all. It would follow the same patterns that we use for pulling content from the content server, i.e. using profiles and rules to drive how things are used to group content for showing it in the portal. But we allow that to be done on the desktop, on the tablet, and even on the mobile phone where you can click into the web content piece like you see at the bottom and change web content directly with the inline editor. We have drag and drop features. We support the multilingual scenarios. Uh, a button to edit metadata, so based on your site design, we can expose a button that will allow you to change how metadata and titles and keywords and things might drive your site. And then also responsive content is a primary driver. Um, a major element that Cox is using and several of our uh, customers are using with respect to targeting content to their customers and users is via personalization. Personalization is on top of security. It's different from security, but works with the content server security in that when people log into your portal, we can grab attributes about them, store them, and map them to content that has been contributed, for example, tagging by values of division, department, or company. Cox is using these primary six, but we've done them as many as 20 or 25 um, for HR benefit type sites where there's a lot of information that might drive how you might present content in your site. The screen on the right shows you a content server profile that has a rule that drives the personalization attributes. That leads to security, and we can work closely with the security model for the content server as well to target how content is surfaced up to somebody. Roles and groups, uh, in Cox's case, are, using, um, are defined in the Oracle Unified Directory. That's their LDAP repository. And we're also using Fishbowl's advanced user security mapping tool 
to drive rule-based definition for security account assignment on the content server. We're using out-of-the-box security, but we're using a rule-based model to manage that. There are two levels of security in any kind of configuration, one on the portal side and one on the content server side, and we use portal roles to help drive experiences like showing the edit button or the preview button on the portal so that the user navigating the site can turn it on and off based on their role. And the content server security is also triggered and dealt with from a con contributor perspective. And if you're in a situation where you have multiple portal sites serving up from the same content server, we can segment those so it looks like they are of their own unique ownership, and but they coexist in the same platform. Uh, you heard Dave and Jason mention a little bit about uh, collaboration. There are multiple views of collaboration when you talk to uh, various industry pundits and, and customers. Um, like Cox mentioned, they are using the activity stream from Drive um, on their landing page, which is an example you see here off to the right. There are also out-of-the-box portal collaboration features for connections, message boards, and activity streams if you choose to surface those up into your site. And Fishbowl also has an element on their portal solution accelerator for the social features against web content where you can like and share and also use blacklisted um, management of words to drive how comments are made. Application integration is probably one of the bigger um, scenarios around the digital workplace, depending on what patterns you're applying to your integration. But that application layer of personal agents can also pull information from database tables using attributes that map to how the source might be serving that data up. REST APIs to pull data back from the source system. We can hide or show content or segments or sections of content on the site based on that, and maybe even target manager details and confidential information as a result of that. So you don't have to have separate physical portals just to apply more granular security to certain areas of the site. Search is a, a very large topic when it comes to digital workplaces, and there's kind of two views of that. One is searching for content on my portal, and another is, is searching for people. And so we, we have two approaches to this. Um, whether you're using people and content as a search result in the same results page, or you separate those and you have a people finder component like we have in the digital workplace of our own to separate that search experience, find, connect, and message people versus a search results page is just pulling content back. We've been using the Google Search Appliance over the last few years with the integration of the portal to give you that relative relevancy type search results experience and help be able to tune that experience, which is better than the out of the box Oracle search. And we realize that uh, Google Search Appliance is uh, being sunset, and many of you who might be on the call. Uh, like Cox, are going to have a window where that's going to run out. And a replacement for that these days is now MindBreeze. It does the exact same things that the Google Search Appliance does in a similar manner, but actually has um, some better options for how you would integrate with the portal. Optimizing your portal performance, that's huge when it comes to these larger scenarios like Cox and some other of our customers who are greater than 50,000 named users and need thousands of concurrent users. So what we've seen based on our approaches with how we develop design and coach our customers to develop and design also yields a kind of a 10% performance improvement over out of the box. We have techniques that we apply based on our single page application, how we pull content, how we use cache to make that experience work, whether we're caching content or caching data from the back end. There are about 12 components um, on the uh, main site that we're seeing in many, many customers. The landing pages can get kind of complex. That's one of the things we coach customers through. Four is recommended when it comes to out-of-the-box scenarios, but we can exceed that quite a bit with the way we're loading our pages and the way we're caching the data. Dave's going to talk a little bit about some of his numbers here shortly on what they're seeing from a data perspective in terms of performance. All right, Dave, you are on the clock. All right, very good. <clears throat> So from a, I thought I'd share a few statistics with you guys. Uh, so we're, we've got 50,000 employees and about 20,000 contractors using this. During our uh, testing before we went live in our staging environment, we did performance testing and we were able to achieve results of, with 1,700 concurrent users, a load times of less than five seconds uh, for the home page, but that also included some login page time. And then secondary pages, you know, linking, clicking around within the portal was less than three seconds. 
And this was on our stage and stage infrastructure, and our production infrastructure is more beefy, more robust, so it's, it's better than that. Uh, although we just have an anecdotal perspective, but it is definitely better than that. Just some other statistics. Last week, we had 38,000 active users, and since we went live in March, our, our peak has been 1,700 users per hour. On the next page, um, I called out you know, a breakdown of the mobile versus desktop versus tablet. And um, you can see we don't have a, a ton of, of usage on mobile, but we're expecting that to grow. And uh, as our audience ages, we expect those numbers to shift. Uh, so this next page, I, I just did a stat review of uh, our top um, pages. And um, the third column I find interesting is the average time on page. You can see that people spend a fair amount of time on some of these pages. And the, the like my time reporting, well, of course, that's where people go to, they got to, you know, they do their time entry for the week. But jobs at Cox is, is where people go to search for jobs in and around Cox. We encourage our employees to stay within the company. And if they are looking for a job, look for it in another division within Cox. So just thought that was something interesting to include. The next page just um, got some feedback from our um, customers, our employees when we went live. You know, we had a tell us what you think button on, on the site. And in the first week, it was 85% positive. 10% just had questions and another 5% didn't like it, which proves you can't please all the people all the time. But we had some great comments, um, you know, like for instance, the, um, you know, there's one from a field service rep on the right hand side there that said um, that they'll definitely use the site more. And that was music to our ears because we want our field personnel to get what they need. That's the, that's the, that's the backbone of our business, right? And, and, and otherwise, everybody said that it was a big improvement from a user experience perspective. Most people really liked the new navigation because we provided multiple ways to get where you're going. So that was what we were shooting for. The next page, I just wanted to kind of show you guys some of the pages that I use pretty frequently. The first one is the news page. So when we looked at the home page previously, you saw some news articles. And if you click on them, they'll bring you to this page so you can see the article and, and you can also get to archives of previous articles. And on the right-hand side, you can see that there is a uh, curated news feed from our divisions um, of you know, different things. And so we feel like this was a big improvement for us in terms of getting information to our employees about our company and um, articles that we wrote, articles that are in the news, et cetera. So this, that was helpful. The next page is an example of our health and money page. And on the bottom right, you can see that um, these links for I need to, well, these are some things that you can do. Well, actually, these are some things that I can do because this is personalized to me. So somebody else that if they didn't have access to certain things, like maybe they're a part-time employee and weren't eligible for Cox benefits, then they wouldn't see some of those links. So this is another example where we're trying to uh, make it personalized and feel like it's, it's about you. And I want to talk about our roadmap. We're going forward. We're we're talking about adding a news channel kind of capability, something similar to Apple News, where you can specify the kind of news that you want to come to you, and and along with that will be a specification or a standard for publishing news articles, so that our division content providers and location content providers or anybody else can pu publish content to a specific format. It can be pulled into this news feed. And it can be uh, driven to me based on what I say I'm interested in. If I say I'm interested in Cox Auto News or finance or something else, that's the news I'll get. And um, the other thing we want to do is we want to kind of shift from more of a, a division focus to an employee-centric focus. So you, uh, you probably couldn't tell the way from what the screenshots I had, but there are certain, there's definitely kind of a division focus to the content and the structure of the site. And what we really want it to do is, is to be more employee-centric and that you would see division content because you were in that division, not because you navigated to a place to see division content. So that's one of the things that we're looking to do. And from a collaboration standpoint, um, Jive is our platform right now, but they were purchased by a venture capital firm, which in my experience is never good from a, for a functional direction for a product set. So we're, we're going to have to reevaluate if that's going to continue to be our platform. 
And from a cloud standpoint, or Cox is, we're trying to be more cloud first. And an example is we've recently implemented SureView as our uh, ticketing system and, and routing system. And Oracle obviously is trying to push all their customers in the direction of the cloud. So we think these things will um, come together at some point in our near future. That's it. And I want to turn it back over to Jerry. All right, perfect. Thanks. Great job, Dave. All right, let's talk a little bit about, uh, spend the last few minutes here talking about the technology options for the digital workplace. You have many at your disposal, depending on where you're taking your, your use cases. But let's start with the on-prem uh, scenario. So Dave is using on-prem and Cox Enterprises is using Web Center on-premise. And um, there is a new release, 12.2.1.3, uh, that's come out recently. But um, when you're considering the on-prem scenario, and if you're an older, there were several people on the poll question that were older on the version of Portal. There are many business user features and developer features that have been rolled out in the subsequent version since then. The multi-channel capabilities, the selection of page layouts to start with, the data-driven user um, integration, the WYSIWYG kind of integration, and the full ECM functionality gets rolled into them. And like I mentioned earlier, sometimes that native integration isn't exactly what you want, and that's where your site design derives some of those features. From a developer perspective, Instead of going down the heavy ADF path, you're going down more of the HTML and REST API type um, path, and you've got options to work with delegating responsibilities in your site design. So when you're deciding and moving through the on-prem, if, if you haven't purchased Portal at all, um, thousands of concurrent users, if you want to still managing the environment on-prem, you can support those thousands of concurrent users. There's a white paper that talks about the baseline for the performance management and configuration. Then on top of that, the tools we use to improve that, your personalization, LDAP directory integration, back office integration. Deciding on on-prem to cloud ties into those last two quite a bit, depending on what the integration patterns are that you are willing to roll into your site. So for those of you who might be interested in the cloud, um, there is an Oracle Web Center Portal Cloud Service that was released this year. It's basically that, that cloud gateway to the enterprise where you are starting at basically what's called a platform as a service with Web Center Portal Cloud installed and ready to go. You can use other options of cloud offerings if you're wanting to administer more of the information or more of the infrastructure and infrastructure as a service patterns, like with cloud compute, bare metal, or virtual machine instances. But if you're looking to cut down your complete set of overhead management responsibilities and you just want to start at the portal application tier, and put your app on top of that, that's where this comes into play. It's the entire Web Center portal and content server in the cloud. You've got capabilities for well logic clustering, VM failover, um, highly available and scalability. There's management tools because it sits on top of the Java cloud service stack, if you will, which is where web logic starts. And you get the single click patching, the scale out, and the upgrade capability very easily in that environment. You've got, when you're in the cloud, if you are like for cloud first, shop and you are doing more cloud, you've got application integration options uh, aplenty, um, rapid provisioning, secure and highly available clustering, and it's a developer focus. If you're spending more time and more effort on your creation aspect as opposed to maintaining the platform aspect, you're getting more bang for the buck. Some of the use cases for this alignment, uh, for those of you who might have uh, barriers into the Web Center portal, um, it's a lower cost point, and lower cost entry to get into it. And management of development or lower environments is a possibility as well. Um, there's a lower overhead of administration and the increased scalability is a huge um, uh, win from that perspective. Many digital workplaces have situations where they have open enrollment and if you're driving a lot of HR activity through your um, digital workplace, that period could be a peak period on a number of pages. You need to scale up to support that. You don't want to fire up another set of servers on-prem. Then you can downgrade that back to what your normal active concurrent users might be. And then obviously the cloud to cloud integrations uh, become a, a good play there. Um, just for a full disclosure in terms of the Oracle capabilities, there is another platform as a service offering called Content and Experience Cloud. Um, it was rebranded here over the last year. It used to be called Document Cloud Service and then it was Sites Cloud Service was added to it and then social network features were added to it which all made up what's called now Content and Experience Cloud. This is a scenario where you might do digital asset management, and if you've heard or read the terms about headless CMS and content as a service, where you put this 
web front end out there, if you will, this site front end out there and pull content from multiple sources, which could include the content experience cloud. It's a lighter weight way of getting into maybe a lightweight digital workplace. You can still share, create and share benefits, or excuse me, share assets with anyone, anywhere, anytime based on what you expose and who you grant access to. Um, easy publishing, mobile enabled, and there's collaboration elements to this as well. The use case alignment is here like we use for a document project collaboration directly. Uh, maybe you're using it for some static brochureware or maybe project websites, uh, lightweight portals or intranets. If you're not being driven by personalization, maybe you're in uh, a lighter weight integration need. And then obviously your digital asset management collaboration. If you're using agencies outside and you want to share uh, internally and externally with the digital asset management. Um, there is a, another large aspect of this that we're seeing with customers who are trying to provide that single pane of glass, and um, that's Oracle Forms modernization. So we have uh, many customers that we talk to that are, are using eBusiness Suite as a back end for their ERP, and it's a heavy Oracle Forms situation. And instead of creating Oracle Forms that might do specific tasks or exposing people into eBusiness Suite, uh, we partner with a company called Aura Player to, that makes it easy to create services based on recording activities of your e Oracle Form screens. Generate those services, test them, and then use those services in conjunction with other delivery channels, in this case, like the portal. Could be mobile, could be a, a custom app, it could be um, a portal app. So over on the right here, we show an EBS pricing and availability screen that goes out, you put the part number in, and you would find pricing available in the warehouse and pull all that data back in a singular user experience. So features of this capability are querying application based on metadata. We can turn return information in context. So now that we're already in an environment that's already driving attributes about who you are, there's possibly other areas where we can drive to the data and target that information as well. It's mobile ready, and you're already leveraging security. You don't need to provide another security layer to make that happen. Benefits are there's no, um, you're avoiding the Oracle Forms development activities and learning those multiple applications. You get the information quicker. You're keeping people active on the site that you built out and put in place uh, for them to use, and your access to content is quickly and on the go. So some use cases are virtual assistant, um, sales assistant, field service operations, and possibly employee self-service, depending on your back office integration needs. Jason, all yours. All right, so thanks for everyone for sticking with us this far. We're at the end here. We're gonna to move to some questions in just a moment, but I just wanted to summarize our discussion today. The first point here is that there's no doubt the digital workplace is here. It's arrived, if you will. Some of you might be shaking your head and say, well, that, that arrived five years ago. Well, what we're seeing now is you know, this, this bringing together of these various technology components and this vision, really starting with this digital transformation initiative to realize the digital workplace, such as what Dave from Cox described at their organization. And Oracle Web Center, you know, and in full disclosure, most of you probably know we're an we're a Oracle partner. All our solutions are really, our content and portal solutions are built on Web Center, um, and it provides that strong foundation for your, your digital workplace from an app and content integration, single sign ins et cetera. And then Fishbowl really provides that value add capability with our portal solution accelerator, really taking that user experience to the next level, ensuring the navigation's there, um, the, the reusable, reusable components are there, and this inline cont contribution, which is key, to make sure that the content stays fresh and new on your portal. And as Jerry mentioned, there's multiple options now. So the digital workplace, as you might think about it, uh, really having that vision and laying that out first, obviously, but as you think about the technology, there's multiple cloud options now for you to consider. And there's also the on-premise version of Web Center for you to consider as well. So really understanding that you have options now that can help you in your planning process. So again, I want to thank Dave at Cox Enterprises. Dave, great job. Thanks for sharing your story. Really appreciate it. Jerry, great job as always. And for everyone that joined us today and stuck with us as we went a couple minutes over, thanks. We hope that this webinar was informative. If you're looking for more information, on Fishbowl's capabilities to help organizations deploy a digital workplace, please check out our website. We have a digital workplace page specifically designed with the content out there to help you have some other resources as you consider your move to the digital workplace. So with that, this is Jason Lehman again with Fishbowl Solutions.
and I hope everyone has a great day. Thanks again.